Hi, I'm John the Engineer Turmel, and tonight I'm going to participate in the saddleback debate between Barack Obama and John McCain, their first debate. There's a chance there's going to be a North American Union, and if ever there were, I'd be running for President or Prime Minister of that Union, so I may as well take this opportunity to explain what I could do for not only Canada, but the United States and the world as well. So, I'm going to be throwing in my answers and one-liners to these uh, arguments made by the other candidates, and I hope you appreciate the errors they're making and the ways they could be fixed. During the next two hours, we will hear both presidential candidates in their own words. Okay, you'll be hearing from the three of us. This is the first time John McCain and Barack Obama will share the same stage since becoming their party's presumptive nominees. However, tonight's encounter, we should make clear, is not a debate. The candidates will be questioned back to back about faith, leadership, and compassion. The moderator, Pastor Rick Warren of the Saddleback Church, just south of Los Angeles. Well, welcome to the Saddleback Civil Forum on the presidency. And what would be the greatest moral failure of America? I think America's uh, greatest moral failure in my lifetime mm -hmm. uh, has been that we, we still don't abide by that, that, that basic precept in Matthew uh, that uh, whatever you do for the least of my brothers, uh, you do for you me. For me. Right. Not enough is done for the poor. Yeah. And, and that notion of... Uh, that basic principle applies to poverty. Mm -hmm. It applies to racism and sexism. Mm -hmm. It applies to uh, you know, not having... Uh, not, not thinking about providing ladders of opportunity for people to get into the middle class. I, I mean, it, it, there, there's a pervasive sense, I think, that... Uh, this country, as wealthy and powerful as we are, still don't spend enough time thinking about the least of these. So he says we need to spend more time thinking about the poor. That's not an answer. I think America's greatest moral failure has been throughout our existence, perhaps we have not devoted ourselves to causes greater than their, our self-interest, although we've been the best at it of anybody in the world. So, Senator McCain's answer is that they shouldn't be so greedy. America shouldn't be so greedy. <laughs> Can you give me a good example where you win against party loyalty and maybe even win against your own best interest for the good of America? Well, you know, I, I'll give you an example uh, that, in fact, I worked with John McCain on, uh, and that was uh, the issue of uh, campaign ethics reform and, and finance reform. Mm -hmm. uh, that wasn't probably in my interest uh, or his, for that matter, because the truth was that both Democrats and Republicans sort of liked the status quo. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I was new to the Senate, and it didn't necessarily uh, in, in, uh, engender a lot of popularity when I started saying, you know, we're going to eliminate meals and uh, gifts from corporate lobbyists. I remember one of my colleagues, who, whose name uh, will be unmentioned, who said, uh, well, uh, where do you expect us to eat? McDonald's? <laughs> and I thought, well, actually, a lot of uh, your constituents probably do eat at McDonald's, so uh, that wouldn't be such a bad thing. Um, but, but I think that uh, we were able to get a bill passed that hasn't made Washington perfect, but at least has, has started moving things forward. Well, so long as money power rules, right. But someday elections will be decided by brain power. Everybody will get a chance to participate. You'll hear the ideas of all the leaders and candidates, not just the top two. And usually, since the orthodox parties haven't had answers, and you don't see any new answers in their programs, the new answers will have to come from the fringe. And that's why I'm called the king of the fringe. Um, and, you know, I guess the other example where um, I, I'm not sure that this was a more of a partisan issue, uh -huh. but it was something that I felt very deeply was when I opposed the initial decision to go uh, into war in Iraq. That was a uh, not a, uh, a popular view at the time, and I was just starting my campaign for the United States Senate, yeah. uh, and I think there were a lot of people who advised me, you should be cautious, this is going to be successful, mm -hmm. uh, the president has a very high approval rating, and you could end up uh, you could end up losing the election as a consequence of this. Let me ask 
Well, the other guys aren't wearing ties, so I guess I won't either, even though we're in church. And I, too, would have been against the war, which I consider an illegal, immoral war. And uh, my great-grand, my grandfather, Adelard Termel, was one of Canada's World War I draft dodgers. So I guess anti-war is in my family, and I'm proud of it. <laughs> Climate change, uh, yeah. out-of-control spending, uh, torture, um, the list goes on on a large number of issues. Yes, the list goes on on a large number of issues, mainly caused by his party, and issues and policies that looks like he's going to continue. Let's get this way. Um, a lot of times uh, candidates are accused of flip-flopping, but actually sometimes flip-flopping is smart because you actually have decided a better position based yeah. on knowledge, knowledge that you didn't have. Right. Uh, um, what's the most significant position you held 10 years ago that you no longer hold today, that you've, you've flipped on, you've changed on because you actually see it differently? Be because I actually... Uh changed my mind. You changed your mind, it, it, exactly. Well, you know, I, I, I'm trying to think back uh, 10 years ago. I, I think that uh, a, a good example would be the issue of welfare reform, where uh, I always believed that welfare had to be changed. Uh, I was much more concerned 10 years ago when President Clinton initially signed the bill, mm -hmm. that this could have disastrous results. Mm -hmm. um, I worked in the Illinois legislature to make sure that we were providing uh, child care and health care and uh, other support services mm -hmm. for the women who, would, uh, who were uh, going to be kicked off the rolls at, after a certain time. Uh, it, had, it worked better mm -hmm. than I think uh, a lot of people anticipated. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, one of the things that I am absolutely convinced of is that we have to have work as a centerpiece of any social policy. Okay. Not only because... Uh, not, not only because uh, ultimately people who work are going to get more income, mm -hmm. but the intrinsic dignity of work, mm -hmm. uh, the, the sense of purpose. We were made for work. We are made for work. And, yeah. and, and, and the sense that you are part of a community because yeah. you're making a contribution, yeah. uh, no matter how small to, uh, to the well-being of the country as a whole. I think that is something that uh, Democrats generally, I think, uh, have made a significant shift on. What? Okay, so welfare reform involves giving people good jobs. But you can't give people good jobs unless you give them paychecks. And as long as there's no money for paychecks, you can dream about giving them good jobs all you want. Want to give them good jobs all you want. It's simply wishful thinking. You need to come up with paychecks. And, of course, we didn't hear anything about that here. Offshore drilling. we got to drill now and we got to drill here. And we got to become independent of foreign oil. Ten years ago, he was worried about saving the environment. Now he can't afford it. One, we've got to do everything. We've got to do wind, tide, solar, natural gas hydrogen cars, hybrid cars, electric cars, and we have to have nuclear power in order to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and save on our energy costs. And by the way, in case you hadn't noticed it, the French, 80%, we love to imitate the French, 80% of their electricity is generated by nuclear power. If they can do it and reprocess, we can too, my friends. And by the way, if you hadn't noticed, we now have a pro-American president of France, which shows if you live long enough, anything <laughs> can We gotta have this, we gotta have that, we gotta have this. Hey, telling us what we have to have doesn't tell us how to get it. So this is the standard politician's wish list. They go, you have to have this, you have to have that. And people go, wow, he wants such great things for us without realizing he never said how you're gonna get it. So yeah, I want all those good things for you. I want space travel. I want no disease. I want motherhood and apple pie. A lot of good things I want for you. Doesn't tell you how to get it. Well, neither did John McCain. As for nuclear, well, nuclear is stupid. Nuclear is dangerous. And it's unnecessary when we have so many clean energy technologies. Oh, they're expensive, is what you're going to say. Well, that's because we don't have the money to afford them. 
fix the money system so that clean technologies are affordable and now we don't need dirty nuclear to risk future generations poisoning.